One of the features that sets B-29s apart from the other World War II period bombers is that it was designed with pressurized heated and insulated crew compartments. To travel from the forward pressurized crew compartment to the aft pressurized crew compartment, crewmen would need to belly crawl through a communications tunnel. The intent of this video is to show footage of a tunnel belly crawl and discuss factoids related to the tunnel. The purpose of the tunnel is described on this page from a 1944 Army Air Force's Wright Field document titled Familiarization and Maintenance Manual for the B-29 Bomber. The B-29 was designed with a circular cross-section for strength and to minimize aerodynamic drag. Crew members traveling from one compartment to another will need to crawl through the communications tunnel. The tunnel is located in the bomber's two unpressurized bomb bays. The tail gunner is isolated and cannot be accessed while the plane is pressurized. This image shows the three B-29 pressurized crew compartments, the forward crew compartment, aft crew compartment, and tail gunner's compartment. The communication tunnel connects the forward and aft crew compartments. The six crew positions within the forward crew compartment are shown in this image. The tunnel's entry cutout is shaded here and resides in the body station's 218's pressure bulkhead. The three to five crew positions within the aft crew compartment are shown in this image. This graphic does not reflect the late war B-29 models which replaced the crew rest compartment bunks with radar and electronic countermeasure stations. The tunnel's entry cutout is shaded here and resides at the body station 646 pressure bulkhead. The channel has produced detailed B-29 gunnery and crew position videos that reside in the B-29's bomber's playlist. This bomber cutaway image shows a 35-foot long communication tunnel that spans over both bomb bays. The aft crew compartment where the radar operator and electronic countermeasures operator are stationed. The aft upper turret is also in this compartment. Forward of this area is the gunner's compartment where the blister and central fire control gunners reside. The lower door in body station 646 bulkhead provides aft Bombay crew access and the upper cutout is the aft end of the communications tunnel. This is a view from inside the B-29's forward bomb bay. Panning up, we can see the centerline communications tunnel above the bomb bay racks. Since the B-29's bomb bays are exposed to the high altitude environment, the communications tunnel is covered with a thick cloth matting, like the rest of the pressure compartment's inner skin surfaces. In this clip, we're in the forward crew compartment, panning past the bombardier, co-pilot, flight engineer, radio operator, and navigator stations. Pressure bulkhead station 218 provides the lower forward bomb bay access through this door and upper access cut out for the communications tunnel. Entering the tunnel from the forward crew compartment, a plexiglass astrodome is located at the top, protruding through the fuselage crown. This will be used by the navigator to estimate the position of the bomber by usage of a sextant celestial navigation instrument. An iPhone camera is held in one hand while crawling on knees and elbows. The PAL traverses over the forward bomb bay, mid bay radar station, and aft bomb bay, eventually reaching the aft gunner's compartment with the central fire control barber station in view. It took around 50 seconds to traverse the tunnel's length. A tunnel usage concern is described on this chart from a May 1945 21st Bomber Command Air Intelligence Report. If a side gunner's blister fails during pressurized flight, a crew compartment rapid decompression will occur. The compartment's pressure will rapidly equalize and the tunnel will be the path of a high velocity airflow. The air in the tunnel could reach speeds of 145 miles per hour. Any crew member in the tunnel would likely be injured or killed. He will become a human cannonball. This should not be an issue while in combat. This premise is based on the B-29 standard pressure operating procedure, as described on this page from the reference shown earlier. Prior to reaching a combat area, start reducing the cabin pressure or increasing the cabin altitude. A sudden pressure vessel rupture may be catastrophic. This clip shows the consequences of a pressurized fuselage section subjected to hull rupture damage. Start reducing the cabin pressure 30 minutes prior to entering the combat area. All crew members should start wearing oxygen at this point. A depressurized plane also allows access to the tail gunner's compartment for rendering assistance if needed. The B-36 bombers adopted a similar tunnel for travel from one crew pressurized section to another. As described in this 1948 Bureau of Aeronautics handbook titled Flight Operating Instructions USAF B-36A Aircraft, the crew member will use a tube cart to travel within the bomber. The cart has rollers and will travel along a tunnel track by pulling himself along by a hanging rope. 
The cart will lock in place at the tube ends. It has a brake to secure the cart during a plane maneuver. This image shows crewmen access locations on the B-36 bomber. This image shows the cart in action. If you've enjoyed this B-29 crew tunnel description video and found it worthy of your time, please consider commenting, liking, and or subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.